another episode of Toy Wildlife. Um, we actually going to be heading out of the East Block this time around, so we're not going to be in Tuscus tomorrow again. Um, heading across to help out some friends at Ivory Wilderness. Uh, so moving to more central parts of the Kasseri or sort of north, uh, northern central parts of the Kasseri along the Kasseri River. Not too far from the Holy and Kasseri River confluence actually. So uh, beautiful spots, sort of rocky hills, a little undulating. Um, so some, some different terrain coming up in this one. And um, yeah, some good game doing in those parts. And uh, we have great traversing, so access to quite a lot of the Kasseri. And hopefully we'll be able to follow up in a bit of the River Pride. I haven't seen them in absolutely ages, so we be very curious to see what's happening on that uh, end. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Stay tuned. Yeah, where's Troy? Uh, I think uh, Stefan is now on standby one. Sorry, I try to relay across to uh, Julia. Okay, copy. Uh, where's he? Where's he to Julia? It's uh, standby. Uh, I think maybe move it to the western channel. That's an iPhone, thanks, Ray. So, <clears throat> this is the River Pride. The Klaseri River Pride. And I've been fortunate enough to grow up alongside these lines and... Oh, they're playing, it's awesome. Um, see them go through their different stages. But I haven't seen them in quite some time, in about a good couple of months, so it's lovely to catch up with them again. And I was hoping when I had come across this side that we would get to see them. Oh, Leo, 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 the officer coming. They look very well fed. They do, they look like they're in great condition, which is lovely. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's nice to see some of the sub adult, well, the young males as well with this pride. Uh, the two dominant males have not been seen in some time, mm -hmm. so. Not too sure what's happened with them. Um, so these younger males have been hanging out here for quite quite a while, and uh, typically they would have been kicked out already. Um, but I haven't spent too much time with these guys in a, in a little stretch, so not too familiar with what is actually happening with them. So this, uh, the River Pride itself, uh, like I was mentioning, is splintered quite a bit. Um, kind of breaking into shards. So the natal pride would be the ones, the, the females that would have originally given birth and have hung around this area over the generations. And uh, the ones that are remaining are just a few of the sub-adults. And the rest that have grown up and gotten a bit older have actually separated into shards and moved to different locations. It does look like there's just one sub-adult, I think it's a young female, that is part of this um, this section of the River Pride. And at the moment we, we're around the Makumu area which is quite typical of them hanging around here, they're moving between sort of a couple of the camps in the area. Uh, Alright, fantastic. We managed to f relocate these guys after this morning. Thanks to the help of Wes. <laughs> so they followed them into the block after we left. And then they just came and found a nice shady spot to lie down for the afternoon. Doing what lions do best. Yeah. Enjoying some rest, not expending too much energy unless it's worth it. We're seeing about uh, five, I count five. Is there That's right, yeah, and there's seven in this sort of subdivision of the River Pride. There's that young sub adult females at the back there, the one that I'm currently focusing on. And then this male is one of the sons of. Horsey and Sasha, which were the dominant males of this pride, 
uh, that they apparently saw about two months ago mating with some of these river pride females. So that's possible. And these two males of those dominant uh, males are coming to the age of maturity at the moment. They're kind of between um, the ages of around about three, heading into that stage where they might be kicked out soon if uh, the dominant males, Horsey and Sasha, return. The younger males, when they start to fill out like this, their mane start to grow and they really start to push out a lot more mane at that two to three year age mark and tufts of hair closer to their elbows. Um, but they only really fill out properly and are fully sort of mature from about five to seven. And that's kind of their prime years, five upwards, for until they reach a bit of an older age of nine, ten. That's where they start becoming a little bit more vulnerable. Um, but they can live all the way up to about 18 years old, but it's not a very common thing. Um, and what's interesting with with older lions, they obviously live through a prime time and then they'll also get to a point where they get challenged by younger males coming into areas to take over pride. And then they'll actually get pushed out and have to be nomadic as well, once again, for the second time in their lives. If they're not killed during that incursion where the, the younger males come in to, to uh, try and take over the pride. Where's that's an A firm. One of these Mafazis has just picked up that the giraffe are uh, to the north. You can see that giraffe has just noticed this lioness. But not completely. I think that giraffe has more noticed us. Troy, Troy, come on. Is there any white here? Oh yes, yeah, this this pride would take down a giraffe, no problem. Um, it'd be very risky for those lions to uh, attack a giraffe, would it not? I mean, they would be risking a lot of injury themselves. Um, there would be risky injury, that's for sure, for them to go for a giraffe. But uh, pride, like the river pride, is quite experienced, especially the natal females, the original uh, girls of the pride. They've taken down giraffe multiple times in the past. Uh -huh. And th remember, these guys are the, even the same pride that had taken down those four elephant in the past. So... They, they have become accustomed to taking down some rather dangerous game. Okay. Uh, having these two males here with them is actually beneficial as well um, because they've got weight and strength to their advantage if they do manage to, to go for a giraffe. But for the moment, looking at their bellies <laughs> uh, and their current interest, does not look like they're too phased by that giraffe walking past. Yeah, so with the uh, giraffe, um, the prides, like they would have learned to try and, uh, typically they'll hunt on a very dark evening where there's no moon. So like tonight's not the greatest night for them. But I mean, that's just using all of the advantages because then giraffe would struggle to see, possibly spook it, run and trip it. Uh -huh. trip it. Otherwise, what they would do is they would try and get between the legs. Some of the females get very good at uh, maneuvering between kicks because uh, a giraffe's hind kick is very powerful and can kill a lion, um, as well as their forward kick. But uh, they'll try and get in between while after a kick has just happened and make use of that moment to try and grip it and bring it off balance. And they'll usually have one to two, even more, of them jumping on that giraffe to try and haul it down. And once it's down, then it's pretty much tickets for that giraffe. Beautiful guys. Well, I think we've had a wonderful sighting of these lions. The we do have the sun setting. And 
indeed, not a bad way to sort of finish up the daylight hours of the day. Yeah. Just when I thought that the sitting with the lines of the sunset was the way to end the day, huh? Yeah, this is really nice. It's beautiful.